Well, it's out of the um, uh, Algebra 2 McDougall Littell textbook, uh, if you want to look into that. But um, uh, basically, what it is is a lot of the geometric series and sequences and stuff like that. Okay. And so um, my teacher, she gave us this kind of review, she, I guess, on just kind of everything on it. But... Yeah, so I was thinking we could go over a few of the problems because I didn't get uh, some of them. Sure. Yeah, go ahead. Go ahead and uh, verbalize them and we'll do them. All right. So, um, let's see here. The first one that I had trouble with, it was uh, find the sum of the series. And so it's the um, Greek letters thing. Not really sure what it's called, but um, that, and then it says k equals zero, with a rule of. Tell, tell, tell me what the series is. Give me the series. Um, what do you mean by that? Well, when they say find the sum of the series, what other information do they give you? They give you that um, k equals zero, and it'll go up to four, and then the rule is k to the fourth. T or P? K. K, okay. So, um, K to the fourth. Now, is there a sigma in front of that? Um, is that the Greek letter that looks like an E? Yeah, that's what that's called is sigma. Yeah. Okay. And there's usually a K going from one number to another. Yep, so it's 0 to 4 in this case. All right, I got it now. All right, what, what sigma means is that we're going to sum up every term in this series. In other words, we've got 0 to the 4th plus 1 to the 4th, plus 2 to the 4th, plus 3 to the 4th, plus 4 to the 4th. That's exactly what that notation means. Okay. What is 0 to the 4th equal to? Is it still 0? Huh? 1 to the 4th? Is 1? Two to the fourth? Is that uh sixteen? Three to the fourth? Um notice that three to the fourth is the same as nine squared. Alright. It's three times three times three times three. Yep, so then eighty one for that one, right? Uh-huh. And 4 to the 4th, I don't know, that's uh, 4 squared is 16, times 4 is 64, times another 4 is 256. Okay. And now what we're doing is adding up those four terms. That's what sigma says to do, is add up these four terms. Well, you got 98 plus 256, you got 354 is the sum of those five terms. Notice there are not four terms in this thing. There are five. And that's because when k goes from 0 to 4, it's 0, 1, 2, 3, and 4, which is five terms. All okay. right. What else? Um, the next one is the same thing, but, um, different, so, well, like, different numbers in it, so it's, um, around the sigma with m equals 1 to 6, and then the rule is m squared plus 5. Best way to do these problems is just to list out the series. Okay. Okay. So, what's the first term? Um, 1 plus, or 1 squared plus 5. Next term? Uh, 2 squared plus 5, so 9. Next term? 
um, 3 squared plus 5, so 14. Notice at this point, we realize we are not dealing with an arithmetic series or a geometric series. Okay. And that's primarily the first two series that you learn are arithmetic series where each term is separated by a constant difference or geometric series where each term is a common ratio of the previous term. Well, there's okay. nothing that works here. The difference between those two is three. The difference between those two is five. So it's not arithmetic. And 9 over 6 is not the same as 14 over 9, so it's not geometric. So there are series other than arithmetic and geometric. What's the fourth term? Um, <clears throat> the next one is 4 squared plus 5, so 21. Mm -hmm. And the fifth term? Uh, 30. 5 squared is 20, okay. Yeah, and, and notice that the same rule applies, that I cannot, in other words, if you want to check to see something, whether it's geometric or not, then the question is, is that the common ratio? Well, that is not equal to 14 over 9, which is not equal to 21 over 14, which is not equal to 30 over 21. So in case you thought this might be geometric, it would have to have a common ratio of 3 halves. Clearly, it's not that. Yeah. Okay. okay. So, and they want to know the sum? Yeah, the sum of the series. Like this, the only way you can really do them is to list out every term and add them up. Okay. In other words, if you remember the arithmetic series, then this was true. Um, Let's see, it was n over 2 times a1 plus a sub n. In other words, you could always figure out the sum of an arithmetic series if you knew the first term and the last term. And if it's a geometric series, then the sum is equal to the first term, let's see, times 1 minus r to the nth all over 1 minus r. In other words, for a geometric series, is all you needed to know the sum was the first term and the common ratio and the number of terms. So these are definitely different problems. Uh, these are series that are neither arithmetic nor geometric which means there is no common sum number. I can't say that the sum is equal to some formula because they're all different. So the only way I can get that sum is by adding them up. 29, 50, 80. That sum is equal to 80. Okay. Um, <clears throat> there are a few rules in the book that they said were like for special cases. Okay. Those, I'll send you a picture of them real quick. Okay. But like, I don't know. They said something about them, but I'm not quite sure what they're supposed to be used for. All right. Yeah, the best way with problems like this is to send me a picture rather than trying to verbalize them. Although I do believe a lot in verbalization that it helps quite a bit understanding problems. But sometimes it's easier to just send a picture and go from there. All right. Do you want me to text it to you or email it? No, don't send it to my phone. I can't bring that up on my screen. If you send it to my email, then I can bring it up on my screen immediately. Okay. In fact, 
fact, I've had problems with people who send stuff to my phone. I have a hard time even uh, forwarding those. I'm not sure why. Maybe I haven't quite figured out my phone. But uh, for sure, the fastest way for me to bring it up to my screen is if you send it to my email. Do you still have my email address? Is it the digital math tutor at gmail.com? Actually, that gets forwarded to me also. This is the best one to use. David Cowan, 1949 at gmail.com. Um, what was the other one you gave? Uh, the other one should have been David at digitalmathtutor.com? Yeah. Okay. This one comes straight to me. The other one gets forwarded to me, and if it's got pictures in it, then it can take sometimes like five, ten minutes. Um, so if you want something to get to me immediately, use the email address that you see on my screen. All right. And tell me when it's sent. Okay. It should be just about sent right now. Yeah. Um, Try to only send one picture at a time. If you send multiple pictures, it's exponential as to how much longer it takes to get to me. In other words, one picture might get to me in 15 seconds. Three pictures might take two minutes. Five pictures might take 10 minutes. Okay. All right. I got that. All right. Um, now let me bring it up. Uh, it looks like I got two things that are both kind of the same. Are they the same picture? Well, did you just send one picture? Yeah. Okay. Is this it? Hold on. Yep, second. that's the special series that she has. Oh, here. yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Formulas for special series. Yeah, these are special. <laughs> and I'm being a little bit facetious. <laughs> These are actually kind of special, uh, especially tough. Um, first of all, do you understand each of these? Do you have any questions about them? Um, I, she did not go over them very well. She basically told us what I and N mean in them, and then we are done. Let's talk about them. If I'm adding up 1, uh, in other words, um, let me figure out a different way to write this. A series that might be like this would be I equal 1 to 4 of 1, like that. Okay. If you had that series, then what it would be would be 1 plus 1 plus 1 plus 1. Okay. See why? Yep. In other words, no variable. That's just the number 1 added 4 times together. And All right. that's what that's saying. Notice that if n were equal to 4, then I'm adding up I'm getting four. Okay. Okay. So that's what that means. Let's talk about the second one. Here I goes from one to n, and I equals n times n plus one over two. Well, what's the first term of this series? One over. Well, it's one times one plus one over two. So yeah, that's two over two equals one. All right. Okay. Now, what is? Here, hold on. So that's the first term of the series. What's the second term of the series? Um, two 
times 2 plus 1 over 2. So that's 6 over 2, so 3. Correct. What's the third term of the series? Um, 4 times 3 is 12 over 2 is 6. Fourth term? Um, 4 times 5 over 2 is 10. All right. Again, we can see that this is not an arithmetic or a geometric series. We don't have a common thing being added to each one. We don't have a common multiplier. All right. Now, what this means, the second formula gives the sum of the positive integers from 1 to n. So if, let's talk about that, if, um, if, let me draw down here, if I was going from 1 to 4, then this would be, first um, four terms, 20? And that sum would be 20, right? I can add those four terms up, and it's 20. Yep. But it's okay. also 4 times 4 plus 1 over 2. Uh, hold on a second. That's not 20. That's 10. Ah, that's the fourth term, is all. Okay. Uh, in, in other words, this formula right here gives you the term. In other words, if I want to know what the fourth term is, then I plug it in for n, which is 4 times 5 divided by 2. So the right. fourth term is 10. So you cannot figure out the sum from this, but you can figure out what the third term is. Notice the third term is 3 times 4 over 2. That's how we got the 6. And so this tells you what any individual term is. Okay. Okay. So it's it's not the whole series. It's just the one number. Yeah, exactly. It's just the, the nth term where I equals the nth term. And then to sum them all up, you just need to add all the terms together. Okay. Awesome. Well, I don't like what they say. The second formula gives the sum of the positive integers from 1 to n. I guess that's how you would call that. Okay. And let's talk about the third one. Here I goes from 1 to n, and it's i squared. These actually have a lot of value later in more advanced mathematics. This gives you the nth term. So what's the first term? Um, the first term is... Uh, 1 times 1 plus 1, so 2, uh, times 2 plus 1, so 3. 2 times 3 is 6, over 6 is 1. That's the first term, 1. What's the second term? Um, 3 uh, times... 2 times 3. Yeah, 2 times 3 times uh, 5. So 6 times 5 is 30, over 6 is 5. Let's see, hold, hold on, let me just check you. 2 times 3 times 5 over 6. Yeah, okay. It's 5. And the third term? Um, let's see here. 3 times 4 is 12 times 7, uh, 12, 
times 7 is 30. Sorry. 12 times 7 is 14, I think. 12 times 7? 12 times oh, 7 yeah, by 6 times. is 14. Yeah. Right. And Sorry. so whatever n was, um, you can figure out the nth term, but this does not give you the sum. <laughs> okay. Uh, uh, hold on a second. Just a, yeah, it looks like all of these using formula. How many oranges are in a stack in example three? Uh, what page is this? This is on page 654. Okay, hold on a minute. Let me take a look at this. How many oranges are in the stack? In example three. Well, example three must have been, oh, earlier, okay. There's ten layers. Mm -hmm. In the shape of a square pyramid. Okay, I'm looking on the previous page. Mm -hmm. Yes, it is. And so, it's I squared. Notice, if you look at the previous page, you're looking at a square on the bottom layer, right? Yep. So the number of oranges on that bottom layer is going to be 10 squared, 100. It's 10 by 10. All right. That's going to be that last term, 10 squared. Yeah. Hmm. Well, I guess I'm wrong. Um, the sum truly is I squared. And that makes sense if you think about it. In other words, are you looking at example six? Example six, yes. All right. Well, the bottom row has ten square oranges, right? Mm -hmm. The next to the bottom row has nine square oranges. Yes. So forth and so on until you get up to the top, which only has one, which is one square. Right. So mm -hmm. if I really wanted the total number of oranges, I need to add 100 to 81, <laughs> so forth and so on. But this gives me a simple way to, to do it. In other words, there's 385 oranges in the stack. Let me just go through this on paper here. All right. Um, this really truly is a sum. Um, and it would be... Uh, times 11 times 21 over 6. Do you have a calculator? 10 times 11 times 21 over 6, that's 385. Okay. So, how can I put this? The third formula gives you the sum of the squares of positive integers from 1 to n. And n could be 10, as with the case of our oranges, or n could be any number of things. In other words, if n was 4, then the bottom row would only be 4 oranges square. So that would be 16, and then the next row would be 9, and the next row would be 4, and I would be adding them all up. But if I want to add them up quickly, 
I can use that formula. All right. Okay. Okay. So this truly is the sums for special series. Now, what did I do wrong on the first? Let's go back and look at that. In other words, the very first one is I equal 1 to N. And the answer is 1 equals N. Hmm. And hold on a second. not quite sure why this doesn't seem to apply to the first one. In other words, if I wanted to add the numbers up from 1 to 10, it doesn't come to 10. It comes to 1 plus 2 plus 3 plus 4 all the way through 10. So number 1 doesn't seem to help us very much. Um, when you're adding up in, um, okay, it kind of does. Uh, uh, now I get number one. If n equals 10, then this is what I'm adding up. 1 plus 1 plus 1 plus 1 plus 1, so forth. All right. So I know the sum of that is 10, right? In other words, right. if n is 10 then the sum of a bunch of ones, 10 of them, equals 10. Yep. Okay, let's look at the second one. I've got i going from 1. Let's make it 4 again. And here it's equal to n times n plus 1 over 2. Well, the first four terms are going to be 1 times 2, so the first term is 1. Second term, where n is 2, is going to be 2 times 3 over 2, that's 3. Let's just do all four terms. Third term is going to be 3 times 4 over 2, which is 6. And the fourth term is going to be 4 times 5 over 2, which is 10. So I, I can see that the sum of those first four terms is 20. But now let's make sure that comes out to be 20. Well, I have 4. Uh, this is what I ran into last time. It doesn't come out to be 20. What the heck? Now, hold on. I'm just trying to figure out why I don't understand this. Um, I must not be seeing something here that I should be seeing. Because in number three, it works out. In other words, in number three, as long as you use that n times n plus one times two n plus one over six, you get the sum of the series, given any n. Yep. I suppose okay. the best thing for us to do is to actually do a problem, and then we'll get to the bottom of where I'm going wrong. All right. Have you got any of these problems at the end of this chapter to assign? Yeah. Um, they're on page... Uh, 673, and it's um, numbers 4, 5, and 6 that I'm pretty sure have it. Okay. So, 4 is the sum of k to the 4th? Yep. 
the problem is is that for these we're going to be able and, and in fact I don't know that there is a, a better way to do these. How many terms are in this series? In this series is four. Or is there five since so case you're five, Because it starts at zero. Okay. Okay, so what's the first term? Um it'd be zero. What's the second term? One to the fourth is one. Third term. Uh sixteen. Fourth term. Two fifty six. Sorry, eighty one. That's eighty one. Three to the fourth, yeah, is eighty one. And four to the fourth is two fifty six. So we would add those together. Okay. What does that equal? Seventeen ninety eight three fifty four is that series, that's sum. All right. Now, my question is, is, does that equal any of those formulas? Um, no, this is all on geometric series. Um, lesson 11.1. Hold on, let me get back to 11.1. Does any of those formulas give you that number? And should it? Now we're having k to the fourth. In other words, is there any way to get that number with a formula? If I substitute 4 for n, I get 4 times 5. What do I get? I get 4 times 5 times 9 divided by 6. No, well, that's not 354, but it shouldn't be. This one, that was i squared. Uh, i to the fourth would be more complicated. Yeah, so they're not really giving you a sum for this problem on four. Yeah, in other words, I think the only way to do this problem on page 673 is to actually list out the terms. All right. Five is one of your problems? Yeah, it's just one through 14 on this page. Okay. So, the only way to do this, I think, Hold on, write the next term in the sequence, then write a rule for the nth term. That's for 1, 2, and 3. We can do that if you want to. Uh, but 4, 5, and 6, I believe we have to write the series out. But hold on, maybe not because this is an m squared. Let's write the series out and see what we get. I'll do it real quick here. When m is 2, then we have 9. When m is 3, we have 14. When m is 4, we have 21. When m is 5, we have 30. And when m is 6, we have 41. Now, what I'm thinking is that we don't have to add those together. Because all we have to do is use that formula for special series, which says that it's n times n plus 1 times 2n plus 1 over 6. And in this case, we have a 5 added to it. Okay. So, I'm just curious to see what we get if we do it this way. Um, first of all, if we do it the other way, we get 29, 50, 80, 121. 
Now if we do it this way, we get 6 times 7 times 13 over 6 plus 5. 7 times 13 is 91 plus 5. Ah, it's 91 plus 30 because there's six terms. That's 121. Yeah, in other words, this is the formula for this problem. In other words, if we wanted to know what the hundredth term sum was, what's the, the sum of the first hundred terms, then we could use this formula down here, which would be a whole lot easier than listing a hundred terms and adding all hundred terms together, right? Right, for sure. Now, it was plus 5n because every single term has a 5 added to it. So it's not going to be the sum for m squared, which would be this, but it's okay. going to be the sum for m squared plus 5. So it's really this plus 5 times n. And that's how I got 121 is I took that, which was 91, and added 5 times 6 to it, and I got 121. Okay. Let's do more problems, maybe. This is kind of an area where I don't get a whole lot of practice on, and so I'm not as up-to-date on these kind of problems. All right. um, Page again. Uh, six seventy three. And we're doing n um, cubed minus one. Yeah. Yeah. Now the cubed, they don't give us that one, right? So we can't even use the formula they gave us. Okay. I'm going to go from one to five. So. Since we don't have an n cubed formula, in other words, they gave us n, n squared, and n. Or actually what they gave us, the three formulas they gave us were for a constant, for an n, and for an n squared. So they didn't go up to n cubed. There is a formula for n cubed, incidentally. They just didn't give it to us. So we can't really use it to assist us here only thing we can do is write out the first five terms. What are they? Um, let's see here. One cubed minus one is zero. And then um, two cubed minus one is seven. Three cubed minus one is 26. Four cubed minus one is 63. And 5 cubed minus 1 is 124. Okay. And then whatever those numbers add up to. And I believe we have to do this the hard way no matter what. Merely because they didn't give us the formula. They gave us the formula for the sum of m and the sum of m squared. But they didn't give us the formula for the sum of m cubed. Okay. Okay. Yeah, I that. So I don't believe we can use that. All right. Um, let's look at seven. Write a rule for the nth term and then find a sub 12. Okay. These are more traditional. In other words, I'm, I get a lot of practice working with arithmetic series because so many students have the first thing they cover is arithmetic and geometric. And we have formulas for those sums. We don't have formulas for those other non-arithmetic or non-geometric series. Um, so first of all, what is the nth term here? Um, what's the general... What's the general formula for the nth term of an arithmetic series? 
That's, you should always probably try to start a math problem with the general formula. It's just a, mm -hmm. a great way to go. Yeah. So is it the a sub n equals a sub 1 plus um, n minus 1 times d? Uh-huh. Okay. So that's always the nth term. Well, they want to know what the 12th term is. Okay. What's the 12th term going to be? A sub 12 equals um, 1 plus uh, n would be 12. So n minus 1 is 11 times d. And it's going up by 4 every time, so d is 4. Okay. So then... So there's, there's the twelfth term. So as long as you're dealing with arithmetic or geometric sequences, these are all pretty easy. You can always figure out the nth term, and you can always figure out the sum of the terms, because they've given us nice formulas for that. Okay. Um, the other problems, a little different. So let's look at the next one. 34, 25, 16, 7, minus 2. What is the nth term equal to? a sub n equals a sub 1 plus n minus 1 times b. Okay, now fill it in. What's a sub n equal to? Um, a sub 16. Or a sub 12, sorry. Not mm -hmm. a sub 12, but a sub 1. a sub 1? Uh-huh. Oh. Always a sub 1. In other words, a sub n is always, for an arithmetic series, it's always this. Never varies. D yeah. can be different for a specific, and a sub 1 can be different. But we can tell what D is here. D is minus 9. And so a sub n equals 34 plus n minus 1 times minus 9. And then we want to simplify that always. So that's 34 minus 9n plus 9. So that's minus 9n plus 43. That would be the nth term. Now let's test it. We can see what the fourth term is, 7, right? Right. So let's figure out what a sub 4 is. But if it doesn't come out to be 7, we got big problems. So it's minus 9 times 4 plus 43 is equal to minus 36 plus 43 equals 7. So when you have these arithmetic series, you can figure out the nth term and the sum rather easily okay. by using these formulas. In other words, always using that formula for the nth term and the sum, which they didn't really ask us to do, but the sum of the first n terms is the uh, number of terms divided by 2 times the first term plus the last term. Okay. So if you have the number of terms and you know the first term and you know the last term, then I could figure out the sum of these. I could say S sub 5 equals 5 divided by 2 times 35. 4 minus 2. That should be the sum. That's 16 times 5. That's 80. Okay, so the sum of those terms should be 80. Is it? Let's see, we get 59, 65, and or 75, and 5 more is 80. So we can always figure out the sum of an arithmetic series using this formula over here. 
All right. Okay. Cool. And let's look at one more, uh, at least. Um, yeah, we got more time than that, but let me write this third one here. I'm not sure why they really give you that material three sections earlier. Be honest with you. Because um, I don't believe they ask you any problems based on those summation, special summation series. No, those, those come into play. Wow, where, where do those come into play? Um, gosh, mathematical induction, all kinds of advanced math. But they're not usually covered in Algebra 2 very much. Algebra 2 tends to stick to arithmetic series and geometric series. Okay, so is this arithmetic or geometric? Um, this is arithmetic. Okay, so what's the nth term? The nth term, so um, a sub n equals a sub 1 plus n minus 1 times d. So then equals 1 half. Oh, what's d? Plus, uh, d in this case is 1 half. Okay. So one half plus one minus one times one. And then again, you always want to. You can always simplify that. So it's going to be one half plus one half n minus one half, which means it's just one half n. Okay. And does that work? Well, we can see. It's always a good idea to do a ballpark check on these. In other words, I can see the fourth term is 2. Well, does this give me 2? Yes. Cool. The fifth term would be 5 halves, and this gives me 5 halves. So a sub n equals 1 half n is the nth term for that series. All right. All right. Let's look at 10. 10 is okay. the sum of an arithmetic series. Well, let me write the first few terms here. That's all I really need to write. In other words, that tells me that it's an, in, an arithmetic series. Okay? And the sum of the first n terms is n over 2 times the first term plus the last term. Well, in this case, they find the sum of the first 30 terms. So what's my problem? Let's, let's list. In other words, my problem is, is that I don't want to list 30 terms and figure out, add them all up. Okay, yeah, that be... That would be a little more, okay, and they might have said 300 terms. So yeah. we don't want to do it that way. We want to do it this way. Well, that way requires us to know the first term, the number of terms, and the nth term. Well, we know that there's 30 terms. And we know the first one's 1 1.4, but we don't know the 30th one yet. So okay. we have to go back to the nth term formula. And first we have to figure out what the 30th term is. What is the 30th term? Um, the 30th term Fill, yeah, fill in the formula. Don't just give me a number. In other words, what, I, what I've written, what's a sub 1? Um, a sub 1 is 1 1.4. Okay. N is 30, so it's 29. What's the common difference? 
Um, the common difference in this one is 1.5. Okay. You have a calculator? Can you figure out what the 30th term is? Yeah, 1.4 times 1.5 times 1.5. Plus 1.4 is 44.9. What is it again? 44.9? Yep. So, now I got everything I need to substitute. So, S sub 30, sum of the first 30 terms, is going to be 30 divided by 2 times 1.4 plus... 44.9. In other words, I had to use this formula to figure out my nth term. Okay. Okay, and what's that equal to? 15 times 46.3. So the yeah. number represents the sum of the first 30 terms of this formula. All right. Hold on. Yeah, no, that makes sense. Okay. Okay. Yeah, I see that. What's the sum of the first hundred numbers? I'm making this one up. One through a hundred. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. What's that sum? All the way through a hundred. Um, for that, what do you do? S of n equals 100 over 2 um, times 1 plus 100. That's simple. I think that's what the answer is. 101, that's 50 times 101. Yeah, that's 1,050. So sums, as long as you have an arithmetic series or a geometric series, then you have the only four formulas you need, which is the A sub N formula and the S sub N. Okay, cool. Okay, let's look at 11. Hold on, I'll write it out. 2, 10, 50. That's all I need to figure out what it is. Is this arithmetic or geometric? Geometric. Okay. Because 10 divided by 2 is the same as 50 divided by 10. If yep. that's true, you're looking at a, ge a geometric series. What's the nth term of any geometric series. It's the gen um, general formula. I thought the uh, a of n equals a sub 1 times 1 minus r to the n over 1 minus r. It's actually just r to the n minus 1. Okay. This is the nth term, not the sum. You were correct on the sum. The sum is a sub 1 times 1 minus r to the n all over 1 minus r. So these are the, your two formulas that apply to geometric series. Okay. Now let's just check. What's the third term supposed to be? 50. Well, what is it? What? In, in other words, when you are remembering these general formulas, I love checking them because my memory is not always perfect. So if I got it right, then the third term better be 50, right? All right. So what's a sub 3 according to our formula? It's 2 times the common difference, which is 5, Square. Mm -hmm. 25 times 50. Okay, so the fact that I got 50 means I got my general formula correct. Okay.
Okay. And the sum. Well, what would the sum of the first three terms be? I can see that it's 62, right? Sum of that is 62. Well, is the sum of the first three terms, it's equal to 2 times 1 minus 5 cubed all over 1 minus 5. Well, 1 minus 5 cubed is minus 124 all over minus 4. That's 31 times 2, 62. So I've got both of my formulas correct. And I just tested them. And I tested them with small numbers. In other words, numbers where it didn't take me forever to add them up. I wouldn't have wanted to add up the first 12 terms of this series, but I can certainly add the first three terms. I can see them, and, add, and I can do that addition in my head. So by checking the sum and the third term, I verified that I got the right formula. All right. Now, yeah. um, on this particular series, they wanted to know the, uh, yeah, let's just finish this problem and then we'll, I'll let you go. The nth term, they wanted to know a sub 15. So the nth term specific for this series is 2 times 5 to the n minus 1. So that's the nth term for this particular series. Now what's the 15th term? which is what they're asking for. Um, so then that would be A sub 15. Well, 2. Oh, yeah, excuse, me, excuse me. Go ahead. Uh, my, my mistake. Uh, equals 2 times, would it still be uh, 5, but to the 14th? Yeah, and of course this is something you need a calculator for. So go ahead and, and make sure you do this one right. You've got to take 5 to the 14th and multiply that by 2. You don't want to take 2 times 5 to the 14th. That would be 10 to the 14th. But this, in other words, the 2 is not affected by that exponent. Okay. Okay. Yes. So whatever that number is, is the fourth or the fifteenth term in this series. And you can see it's going to get pretty quick, but you can see why. I'm multiplying by five every time. So it's going to be a big number. Five yes. to the fourteenth is, I don't know what it is, but it's a big number. You don't need to read it to me, but as long as you have it on your calculator, multiply it by two and you have your fifteenth term. All right. Yeah, it's like 1.2 billion. Yeah, I was going to say, yeah, I, I, I don't even want to take the time to have you read it to me because it was such a big number. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Morgan, I hope that helps. Um, I'm not sure why they started you off this chapter with those formulas for special series. Not quite sure what the point of doing that is. I don't see the point of that. That should have been 11.6. <laughs> In other words, that's not the way to start off teaching about arithmetic and geometric series. But, I, yeah, that one. Yeah, no, it just confuses. Um, but when you start off with just arithmetic or just geometric, then you have formulas for everything. Okay, awesome. Okay, Morgan, you have a good rest of your week, and I'll talk to you next time. All right. Thank you. You too.